All right, I suppose I'll uh, I'll get in on the conversation. Corey made a video that was talking about SoPal slash Lambdog, whatever you want to call him, being an undecided voter. And uh, Corey was a little um, opinionated about that thing. And of course, uh, our boy Eric was chiming in on the conversation. Um, I understand why people don't like Donald Trump. I really do. There's a, a lot of things that I don't like about Donald Trump. Um, the real question is, what are your values? What, what do you value? Um, also, how, how easily manipulated are you? Um, do you value a strong economy, a strong border, um, laissez-faire economics, free market economics? Um, do you tend to be less woke or more woke? There's all those things. So, you know, I, I can't assume that everybody thinks like me. So I understand how Donald Trump rubs a lot of people the wrong way. And again, he rubs me the wrong way in certain ways, but he doesn't rub me the wrong way enough to where I won't vote for him. Um, I don't think that voting against somebody because you don't like their personality, I don't think that is a very, and I'm not saying that Lamb Dog feels this way. I'm saying a lot of people feel this way though. I don't think that's a very wise way to make your decisions. It's like, um, it's like when you're a teenager and you date a girl because she's got a pretty face and big tits. Like that's the only reason why you date her. Like we all did that kind of stuff, right? Like she's hot. I want to, I want to date her. And then once you get in a relationship with her, you're like, oh my God, I can't spend another five minutes with this girl. Like she's a freaking narcissist. Um, and it's like, I'm sick of looking at like, she's pretty, but it's like the, the novelty of how beautiful she is has worn off. So, um, why you would vote for a president, a presidential candidate, because of the color of their skin or the shape of their genitalia um, or because they tell funny jokes or I really, really hope that the majority of people who are voting for whoever they're voting for aren't doing it for those reasons. Um, to a degree, I agree with Corey that at this point, if you're undecided, I don't, I don't look down on you if you're undecided, but if you're undecided at this point, I mean, we're just about a month away from the election. Maybe you shouldn't vote. Um, I know a lot of people who aren't voting, um, because they don't like Kamala, but, and they definitely don't like Trump. Um, I was talking to this woman at work who she almost always votes Democrat and she just did, does it because she thinks Republicans are evil. You know, she was uh, brainwashed to believe that, which is fine. I mean, a lot of people believe that. I'm not saying it's okay to believe that. I'm saying it's unfortunately uh, very common to, to think that the other side is just straight up evil. Um, and, I, and I basically talked her into not voting at all. And I feel like I did my job there. You know, she she's a coworker of mine, so she's in the mortgage industry, and she's just talking about how awful things are right now. Interest rates are high. People are defaulting on their mortgages left and right. It's hard to write loans. It's because housing isn't very affordable right now. Um, prices in general are going up everywhere. So our income in the mortgage industry is going down and prices are going up. And I was like, well, I'm like, I'm not trying to turn this into a political conversation, but while Trump was in office, were, were we having these problems? And she's like, no. And I was like, well, I said, look, you know, I don't know what Trump's going to do, but he's focused on the economy. He's talking about bringing interest rates down. He's talking about 
what he needs to do to, you know, get the get like put some oil in the gears of the economy, get things going again. I'm like, do you think that what Biden has done in the past four years has worked? And she and you know she's an honest person. She said no. She's like, but I just can't vote for Trump. I said okay, maybe maybe just don't vote then. And she's like, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And so really. Not a vote for Kamala is a vote for Trump, in my opinion, because um, it's in Col- you know she's in Colorado, so they're a swing state. Um, they've been leaning pretty heavily liberal lately, unfortunately, because you know the states are getting, and this is a totally different conversation, but the states are getting to a point now where the biggest city in that state determines the whole determines the whole state. Like Chicago, however Chicago votes, the whole state of Illinois goes that way. There's a hundred um, counties in this in the state of Illinois. And Cook County always goes Democrat, and usually 90 plus counties in Illinois go Republican, but the whole state goes Democrat because of Cook County. And so, Colorado, that's happening in Colorado because of Denver. Um, I'm in the Phoenix area, as you guys know, that's a capital city. And uh, Arizona used to be pretty right leaning, but um, because shit's getting so crazy over in California, everybody's pouring into this state and they're bringing their politics with them. They're like, man, we can't live in California anymore. It's crazy over there, man. All the rules and regulations and the and the, and the taxes are so high and the like, cost of living is so high. We're going to Arizona. Like, okay, that's a great idea. Come on to Arizona, but you're going to vote differently when you get here, right? You don't want to the same shit to happen in Arizona that happened in California. Oh, no, no, we're, we're, we're still liberals and we, you know, we're still going to, like, like, it's very strange the way the human mind works. Um, they think that they can create a mess somewhere and then just leave the mess and go somewhere else. Don't change the way they do things and create a new mess in the new place that they go to. And then once things get horrible in Arizona, then they'll just go to New Mexico or something. Same thing happens in Indiana. There's actually a sign uh, we pass it a couple times on the border of Illinois and Indiana. It says, welcome to Indiana. Um, please, <laughs> it's something along the lines of, we assume you're leaving Illinois because of how horrible it is. Please don't bring your politics with you when you move here. Something along those lines. But you know, you can't, like people's um, politics, they're embedded so deeply into their into their thought process that you can't, you know, they're not going to take the blame for the reason why their state or their city or their county or whatever is falling apart. They're not going to do that. But, you know, again, go back to Chicago. Like I, I was born and raised in Chicago. I, I, I lived there for a very long time. We left there in the, in the, uh, mid to late eighties, like 87, we left there. And I remember going places with my mom I, obviously I couldn't drive you know because I was like 10 11 12 13 years old but I you know we used to take the toll road places and my mom was like kind of pissed off that there were toll roads she's like why do I gotta stop every couple miles you know but uh and there's this little basket and the and the sign would say 35 cents so you know she'd have a ton of uh quarters and dimes in, in her little ashtray she'd take a quarter and a dime out ching, and then we go so, you know, we would have to go downtown Chicago for some reason, and we'd hit three or four tolls on the way there, three or four tolls on the way back. Say you hit four tolls, that's $1.40 there, $1.40 back, $2.80. She didn't want to pay it. She was pissed off about it. Do you have any idea how much you pay in tolls in Chicago now? Do you have any idea how much it is now? I went to visit my brother. I drove through the city of Chicago one time one time one way I spent over a hundred dollars in tolls a hundred dollars I had to give him my debit card for crying out loud I I didn't have a hundred dollars in cash in my car I'd use my debit card And they're still going broke? 
They still don't have enough money to fix the potholes. They still don't have enough money to pay the Illinois state lottery winners. They don't have the money, dude. They don't have it. How many millions of dollars do you think the toll roads alone rake in every day in Chicago? And they still don't have the money to do anything. And how long has that city been run by Democrats?